Hotepu dreamers, welcome to our next tableau in our dreaming and astral projection sequence. And here we begin our next 10 day cycle of laying down visualizations, where the goal is to simply discipline yourself to study the image you see on the screen from the tableau of Ani, the Egyptian Book of the Dead. And this is from the version by Raymond Faulkner. It's called Plate 6, in case you have the actual text. And you simply practice staring at the image, trying to reproduce it artistically, as shown here, in your head. This strengthens the dreaming power, and the feedback I'm getting back are basically two things. One, I'm hearing people tell me they're noticing they're able to simply recall their dreams more readily those who are doing the exercises continuously and thoroughly are reporting back to me that they're just able to recall their dreams more quickly and more readily and they last longer in their mind and so it's important you practice that you have discipline and that's the goal here is simply to discipline your imagination over a year span over and over and over because the dream state is akin to the death state so if you're finding you're having a hard time trying to focus on these tableaus and trying to practice this dreaming technique it's probably because there are issues that you're afraid of letting go there are things that you're clinging to that you're attached to and that you're frightened of releasing in your life and we would say there are certain things you're afraid to let die and I don't mean physically die I mean dying to the state that it's always been or dying to being in your life things you're trying to prevent from evolving in your life and that's a very serious issue because nothing on earth lasts all physical things will come and they will go so you have to learn now the art of detachment, the art of surrender and letting go and letting things go through their cycles. By identifying with the part of you that is immortal, which is Amun, cosmic consciousness or your Ba, that part of you cannot die. It can lose nothing. It is full, wholly complete, all by itself. Always has been and always will. So those of you who are telling me you're not keeping up with the assignments, you're not really practicing daily or every evening, there are other issues going on for you as to why that is, besides of course being perhaps busy, but you have to lay down, you have to sleep. There's no reason why you can't try to memorize and reproduce in your mind parts of this picture over the next 10 days. So I would invite you to look deeper at things that you're afraid of letting go things that you're afraid of releasing or people and experiences that you are afraid of letting go relax and unclutch learn to release attachments and unclutch so this tableau is a very key one because here we see here Ani the character the main character of the text actually in full mummiform sarcophagus okay so this is kind of a climactic point in the first phase of the storyline of his journey into the afterlife or his journey into the dream time what he's doing it the book of the dead could be read three ways the book of the dead meaning the book of what happens after life the book of what happens at initiation or the book of what happens when you fall asleep Initiation, death, and dreaming are all the same phenomenon, just various scales of intensity and duration. That's the only difference. So here we have, just to give you a few brief insights to help you to memorize the image, we have here men carrying offerings to Ani's tomb or to his initiation process to help energize it. 
or to the dreaming process. This is telling you that if you want to dream well and learn to travel the astral planes, you have to bring offerings, you have to do rituals, you have to do something to energize those spirits to deal with you. And what you're offering now is the discipline of mental focus and concentration. Notice here that these two figures are carrying these chests filled with offerings, but these men are carrying the chests on a crossbar where they become the fulcrum. This resembles the scales of Ma'a. So we're having a play on the scales of the double truth. We have two men carrying two scales bearing the double truth and what they're telling you here is that the things that you are granted in life or in meditation, dreaming, or the afterlife offerings, the number and quantity of things that you get are a function of how the scales read you in the earlier tableaus. Were you a good person? Did the scales balance out? Then you get more offerings to energize you more for a longer afterlife or longer dream life or more intense initiatic process. So these two figures are playing on the double ma'ati, the double truth hall. Okay, and then we have here ten whalers in that kabuki white makeup. These are black women. These are not white women. These are Africans. But it's very traditional in many African systems that when someone passes on or is going through initiation or movement towards spirit, that the females will paint themselves in some kind of white kabuki style form. What's key here is that there are ten whalers altogether. And although it looks a bit chaotic, it's quite orderly. You have two females here who are very stable. Notice their arms are crossed. They're very calm. Then you have three on the left and three on the right in various whipping motions of the hands. This kind of covering of the face motion is a very classic ancient African, particularly comedic mourning ritual or mourning gesture. And then you have two females on the end. So it's quite symmetrical. You see? What you're seeing here on one level is a hurricane. This is a link primarily to those of you who are into Orisha work understand a goddess called Oya, who is the queen of the cemetery and she owns the gates between this world and the next. We call it Wacha, the cobra, the spinning cobra. And in this case, the whalers represent the kind of hurricane of change, the winds of change that whip around someone who's deceased or who's in deep meditation or in initiation or when you're falling asleep. You know when you fall asleep, you kind of go through this kind of falling experience or this kind of going through a tunnel or some kind of passage that would be Wacha, that would be this symbolic whirlwind you see here. It's a symbolic with their hands whipping around, they're creating a kind of vortex of a tunnel into another dimension. And we have here the Eye of the Storm. We have the two female figures here, the two drag queens here, who are still and calm. Then you have the three and three kind of whipping around. Then you have the two on the edge, which are the foundation of the hurricane of change, the winds of change, the part touching the earth. And these ten drag queens here correspond to what's called the ten spheres of the tree of life. But specifically, the some call it the Kabbalah. The bottom sphere, called the tenth sphere, is called the sphere of Geb, the earth god or the physical body. And here we're seeing that the physical body is being pulled into a hurricane of change called sleep, meditation, dreaming, or death. And so what's happening is a wailing or a crying of the loss of physical contact, of connection, or of the astral cord. What you're seeing here is the releasing of the astral cord during the transition process at death or the stretching and spinning of the astral core during dreaming or meditation or astral projection. So inside of this tenth sphere 
there are 10 tinier spheres. So there's a tiny tree in the 10th sphere of the big tree. So these are the 10 spheres in the earth sphere of the tree of eternal gay life because you're losing contact with all 10 subspheres in the major 10th sphere. It may sound a bit confusing if you're not familiar with the Kabbalah or Tree of Life. We call it Tree of Life. The word for Tree of Life in ancient Rinkam is Am or Amma. Amma means Tree of Life. And so they are wailing for the loss of that connection. They're also wailing finally for the loss of a divine enlightened citizen or family member who became a divine person on earth. We're losing a divine initiate in our home, in our family, and in our town. And he's going off to another adventure beyond the body. So the body here, the physical forces, the physical planes, the astral cord is wailing for the loss of a really great soul to the town, to the family, and to the village. Next we have more offerings here. And we have up here on a higher plane a cow and a calf and the calf is three-legged. One leg has been cut off for sacrifice. This was very traditional and comedic burial ceremonies to sacrifice the leg of a calf. And here you see the haunch of the calf being carried by this small figure, this childlike figure. Okay. What we see here is this cow the cow represents the sign of the bull of Taurus, which is the first earth sign, the physical body, and of cultures. So here we have a person who is going to the heavenly culture. That's why the cow is elevated high. The cow also symbolizes the sky or the heavenly plains. And so it's telling us that this person through these offerings is now going to feed his heavenly life. And the calf represents a new birth. That when you go into the other side of the West, when you go into the dreaming or meditation or death state, you are like a babe. You are like a newborn. And you are not able to stand on your legs properly. You're not able to get your footing there you're like when you're born through a physical through the womb you come down basically you can't do anything for yourself so when you come from heaven to earth through a womb you come as a helpless child it's the same on the reverse when you die from the physical world and are born back into the spirit world the afterlife you're born as a baby helpless and innocent and vulnerable that's why Egyptians bring offerings with them because what happens is these offerings become th their astral forms follow you to heaven. So you get astral furniture, astral homes, astral servants, astral food because you're in the astral plane. So the Kamau believed, or not believed, but they knew you can take it with you. You can take the astral form of things with you to help you have a wonderful, beautiful home that's furnished with clothes and plenty of food and friends and family on the other side. So this calf is reminding you, that's why it's over a young child looking figure. You see the theme? We have two youthful figures here. Reminding you that when you go into the other side through trance meditation, dreaming or death, you are born as a babe. You're vulnerable. You need help from the spirit beings on the the other side. And this haunch he brings belongs to the constellation called the Big Dipper, called Mesketu in ancient Rinkam or ancient Egyptian. And Mesketu dealt a lot with the canopic jars, your organs, which were weighed and measured, we saw in the tableau, where Osar, or gay DNA, was being weighed. This haunch represents the Big Dipper stars, which correspond often to the four canopic jars meaning your organs health, that your organs health will be taken with you. Your organs energies will be taken with you. And there are some myths where the haunch of the Big Dipper is called the Thigh of Set, the god of evil or the god of materialism. And 
and it's also telling you here that through the rending and the tearing as we saw here in this hurricane of the tearing of the physical dimension from the spiritual dimension the metaphysical dimension here it's telling you that you're going to have to face even in the afterlife your drama your issues your karmas you're going to have to really go through some tests the word set also means stone as in rock and you're going to have to still build yourself you're going to have to really hew through the rocks that were blocking you in life that's what this is talking about okay that even though you're reborn as a babe you carry with you your karmas okay as told on you by the organs your organs then in this register here we have the full blast funeral ceremony here we have priests reading the book of the dead to you the initiation text that you mastered when you were training on earth like right now many of you are not who are not doing the dreaming technique here you're playing with your afterlife you have to start practicing how to go through the afterlife experience how to let things go how to unclutch how to meditate how to dream and all of that is done by simply laying down and practicing the images so we have here a priest a lector priest or a reader reading to you reminding you of the rules of the dream world reminding you of the experiences you are now having and what you have to do very similar to the process in the Tibetan Book of the Dead which came from this book and then we have here the Sem priests who are offering incense and many foodstuffs here and the opening of the mouth tool here to open the mouth of the mummy here who is being buttressed by the god Anpu the mummifier and here we have a drag queen kneeling and notice the drag queen's kneeling right at the crotch as if giving him literally a blowjob the crotch of the deceased or the initiate this is telling you that you have to stimulate your kundalini energy when you meditate every time you meditate you're actually stimulating your sexual or kundalini energy your chi your jing your ashe uh, to help you to navigate and to stay awake on the other side there's a strong link in many African systems with death and sex it's very strongly seen oftentimes in New Orleans when you have Baron Samedi the Baron Samedi he is the uh, death god who is often shown wearing black kind of tuxedo with black glasses black hat black cane and uh, he is the god of death and of sex well here you have it right here death a mummy and sex basically a blowjob you see but it's saying you need to that the meditation death dreaming process actually arouses life force you see and Anpu here buttressing it he is the jackal god of proper mummification technique He's also your thoughts, your beliefs that you take with you on the other side. The degree of your mental and intellectual wisdom and intelligence go with you. Your thoughts go with you because we're mental creatures. And also, because he is a jackal creature, jackals are able to eat rotting flesh this means that they're able to take dying things consume them and convert it into living tissue so this is a fantastic alchemical reference to how there is a force at the dreaming dying or astral projection process that can take what seems to be the death of one stage of your life and consume it and extract information from it and create new life it's to me a brilliant brilliant metaphor and so then we have here a burial chapel and what's interesting here is you don't often see in Kemet proper these kinds of 
tombs that are that have this narrow, more narrow pyramidal shape, this more acute angle. But you do see a lot in the Nubian temples. The Nubian pyramids look much more like this. So this shows that, of course, the Nubians and the Kamau are the same people. It's like saying South uh, Americans from the South and Americans from the North are different races. No, they're just South you know, Americans from the South and Americans from the North, Yankees, etc. So this pyramidal shape represents a word called soped, or sopedu, Sirius, the star Sirius, in the constellation of Ursa Ma uh, Canis Major, the great dog. And this is telling you that the star Sirius, which controls your chakras, will be active and aroused here, as we see the blowjob, arousing the Kundalini, that your chakras will stand up and will now go through an astral experience as you enter the spirit world, this door here. Note how small the door is. This implies the fact that you've lost physical mass. That's why it's drawn small. No human can, no adult, this giant man here compared to this door can never fit through there. This is a spirit door and so his spirit body can wisp through there and it also reminds you that a child could perhaps go through there a very small child because you're going to be born as a baby on the other side. So this is a brief analysis of this tableau. When you become initiated we go much more into detail about what you're looking at here. But the goal now is try to reproduce it yourself. Try to simply lay down for 10 days, just 10 days, and better and more and better and more image this scene. Enjoy awakening the power of astral projection dreaming, meditating, and passing on to the next life. Dwawend Hotepu.